if you're in the industry, you probably know what this is, a 358 kilo silicon ingot. What's your minimum specification? As part of my travels, I'm here at Semicon West. This company is called YD, and they create the machines that actually pull these ingots out from the manufacturing process. So the ingots go on to somewhere else to get diced and then manufactured. But this is what? 10 feet tall, 10 feet tall ingot, 358 kilos. And uh, yeah, okay, length, two meters. So the idea is that when you have your molten polycrystalline silicon that is a grade for doing logic chips, you melt it down, use a seed crystal, and then you pull it out while rotating, and you generate this big, long crystal. For this grade, you need to pull it at about 0 0.01 millimeters per minute. So uh, this is 200,000 minutes of pull. This company does the pulling. And on top of that, they also have a 17-inch ingot, which I'll speak about for a couple of seconds over here. So this here is the 17-inch ingot. And uh, I'll share a photo that Dylan Mattel at Semi Analysis took of me trying to take a bite of this thing. It is polished, polished to a mirror shine. This is a bit smaller. This is only 93 centimeters, 930 millimeters. And you're thinking, why do we have a 17-inch wafer? This is 440 mil. Surely after we go from 300 millimeter, 12-inch wafers, we go to 450. Well, the point of this isn't that it's being used for chips. Speaking to some of the representatives here at YD, a 10-year-old company who, like I said, make the uh, manufacturing tools to create these ingots or bulls or however you want to pronounce it. Technically, there is a difference between an ingot and a bull. Um, apparently, the difference is what you read in a textbook. Uh, but the whole point of doing this sort of thing is that when you cut it up, you essentially have a carrier for your standard silicon wafer. Now, as the silicon wafer goes through the machines, you've got to think, well, what is a silicon wafer actually held on? And you need some level of carrier support that's bigger than the wafer itself. Now, for this, you don't need that 99.99999% pure polycrystalline silicon in order to make it make chips out of it just because it's a carrier but you still need something that you know behaves much like the chip you're trying to produce so i'll show some b-roll of some of the examples that they have uh, just behind me here but some of the ways in which these uh, these wafers are attached into the machine is through suction especially for dry etch and uh, that's just one of the processes that can be used to manu manufacture chips um, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> Just standing next to, ne ne next to a 350 kilo piece of almost pure silicon. Um, if you've happened to watch uh, Anastasia in Tech's latest video where she actually drops her wafer and shatters it into pieces. Anastasia, I think there's a fair few extra wafers here <laughs> for you to break, for you to do a Linus with. Um, but the machine itself that they use to create these sorts of things, well, they've got a muck up of exactly what that looks like. So this is an active trade show. There are lots of people around me. This company is obviously looking at customers and plebs like myself who are interested in this sort of thing. Um, so the idea is you have this uh, thing in the middle, this sort of crucible where you have your crystal crystalline silicon. You melt it down and then you use a sea crystal and then you put it up very slowly, very methodically, very mechanically because you need your wafers to be consistent. You need to be, have them the right size and uh, let's just say it can be very expensive if it goes wrong. Now, I know this is a short video, but I just stopped here on the show floor because, hey, wafers, ingots, bulls, and you know, multi-million dollar machines that actually manufacture it. Because this is before you even get to the fab, right? You need to have the wafers, and how do you do the wafers? You've got to grow them. Uh, you've got to make sure that they're also cost effective. I mean, prices for wafers vary depending on who you ask. If you want to buy a one-off, maybe, a, a pure silicon wafer that is a one-off maybe sort of like two three four hundred dollars if you want to buy a pre-processed one that's got some sort of test vehicles on it you can go to aliexpress and pay maybe fifty sixty dollars um, but obviously the foundries when they buy in bulk they're looking for so you know sort of sub one hundred dollar uh, costs per wafer um, yd here says that their main customers uh, partially because they're young are mainly focused in china and south korea and south korea is where they're based um, but it'll be interesting to, uh, to see on the show for exactly how many companies are here showcasing this stuff and who actually bothered to cart you know, several 
several 500 kilo uh, ingots onto the show floor. But stay tuned for more content here on Tech Tech Potato.